It's time to fire this thing up. What you're looking at is the top cap to our 1960 15 foot Glastron Fireflight that we recently completely re gel coated with this material right here from Fiberglass Coatings. This is their exterior gel coat. And we did an entire process for when you're doing a major repair on a boat, not only for the top cap, but also we completely redid the hull. Well, good deal you made it. Hi, I'm John Graviscus. It's great to have you back in the boat shop. Now, the facility where I'm at is, is not ours. This is Marine 31's boat shop. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to have Mike Phillips, the director of training on the program. And Mike is going to teach us how to wet sand out gel coat. And then after everything's wet sanded, we're going to get into compounding. We're going to show you some simple ways of how to compound the boat and make it look like a mirror. Now what's really going to be special about this boat in today's episode is Mike has gone ahead and he has invited people from all over the world to join us today in one of his boat detailing seminars, which is going to take place on my boat. It's going to be very, very exciting. And here is just a little sampling. Now today's program is going to be jam-packed full of other informational tips and advice. And speaking of advice, let's hear from another guest expert in the marine industry on how we can all better make our boats ship shape. John, what we have here is in typical embroidery. This is on a bag, but any of the things that are done like this stitching. The problem in the marine application is that this is a polyester thread. So what happens is this stuff fades really quickly and it doesn't hold up well. So you might get two years out of a product like this in the sun. Who we have back on the program is my very good friend, Mike Erickson, the owner of Canvas Designers. He has the world's largest custom canvas shop. We also have my very good friend, Bill McDaniel, the Marine Market Manager for Glen Raven Custom Fabrics, and you're the makers of Sombrella. That's correct. So you can put polyester thread onto the best fabric in the marine industry, Sombrella, but it's still gonna fade out. It's still, still gonna, gonna fade, fade out. out. Yep. You guys are always coming up with solutions. You're always fixing problems. Yeah. What have you come up with for embroidery? Well, John, as we uh, recognize that embroidery is a, a very intricate part of the boating experience, we also recognize what Mike said, that the polyester threads just don't hold up. So we have the fabric, the fiber in our Sombrella that withstands uh, weathering and, and UV degradation. So we say, well, why not make a thread that we can embroider uh, out of that same fiber. Okay, this is a new Sumbrella thread, and does it come Sumbrella. in a lot of different colors? It comes in 14 different colors right now. Okay, what, All primary what, what exactly is this right here, Mike? That's a product that we actually make a lot of in our shop. It's a boarding step pad. Right. So when you board on the boat, this drapes over, it's weighted on each end, typical name of a boat on it, and it drapes over the gunnel. When you board the boat, you step onto this instead of onto the teak or the fiberglass. Do, do you need to have special embroidery equipment to actually do this for customers? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yes, absolutely. You, yes you absolutely need an embroidery machine. Okay, but they um, can take a picture, send it to you, and, and then you can copy it and, and turn it into something, some creative art. Absolutely. Okay, now, now where where can people find the thread? Simply go out to your local fabricator like Mike or go online and, and where to buy it. Choose a local fabricator in your area and they can access the product through distribution. Get, give everybody the website. It's umbrella.com forward slash shipshape. Shipshape TV, the global leader in boat improvement, is being brought to you in part by Sunbrella Marine Beautiful Fabrics. For above and below deck, Sunbrella. We live to be on the water. By Boat Outfitters, your source for replacement hardware, custom King starboard doors, tackle centers, and more. Need it? They'll build it. Visit BoatOutfitters.com to update or customize your boat today. And finally, made possible by Yamaha. 
Reliability starts here. Welcome back. This is a real working 28 acre boat yard slash boat building facility residing in Stewart, Florida. It's Shipshape TV's home base. Ideally located, the complex is situated on the shores of the Okeechobee Waterway, which happens to connect the Atlantic Ocean to the Gulf of Mexico. Now once again, here's the founder and host of Shipshape TV, John Graviscus. What I have here is a piece of 1,000 grit wet dry paper. And traditionally, how I've always been kind of taught how to wet sand is you get a bucket of water along with a little sanding block. You put your wet dry paper on, you dip it in the water, you do your wet dry sanding, you dip it in the water again to clean it, and you keep going. But apparently, I've been doing things kind of, <laughs> kind of wrong. And uh, where we're now at is at the Marine 31 boat shop, and who we have on the program is an expert in detailing. And uh, he's corrected me <laughs> off camera. This is Mike Phillips, and Mike is the director of training. And Mike, why, why is this not such a great idea, w dipping in your wet paper into a bucket of water? Well, this is kind of the old school system, and technology's really changed. Just like, you know, our phones change weekly, the sanding technology's changed so fast. And this is kind of archaic. You know, as you're sanding the material off the boat, you're contaminating the water, you're drawing your water from to sand again. Okay. So you're getting uh, gel coat built in there, plus the abrasives are coming off the paper and then they get lodged between the paper and you put what's called tracers in. Those are deeper scratches that you're going to have to fight out when you're compounding. Okay, so what do we use instead of that? Well, most people are familiar with this. This is an air power DA sander. A lot of body shops use this to knock down Bondo and primer. You can also use this to knock down orange peel and modeling and surface imperfections by putting these sanding discs on here. The problem with this is it takes a lot of air to feed one of these things. We call them air hogs. It's a great tool, yeah. but if you don't have the air to supply. A lot of shops have, and if they do, they can use this. But here's an alternative if you don't have the air compressor. This is a Porter Cable 7424XP. And instead of using it for polishing, I've got the same sanding disc on there by putting a six inch backing plate. I'm ready to start sanding with this. Okay, now I'm seeing some big red flags kind of jumping up here. We're talking about wet sanding, okay? and you're using an electric tool, those two things aren't always compatible. Well, first of all, I've never been shocked and I've done a lot of sanding with electric tools. But second of all, if your house or your shop doesn't have GFI outlets, any hardware store you can pick up a portable GFI, plug into this and now you're safe. Okay, now what is in this bottle right here, Mike? Okay, so instead of using the old bucket with the rag kind of technique where everything's contaminated, I've, all I've done is put clean water into a clean spray bottle, I've added a little bit of soap, and now I have a fresh water supply. And we're not so much as wet sanding with a lot of water, now we're just damp sanding with a little bit of water, and that makes it safer. What's the soap for? Well, the soap keeps the, the, uh, the, the material you're sanding, so in this case compound or a gel coat, from building up and lodging onto the disc. It also makes the sanding smoother because it's acting as a lubricant, so it's going to be a much more smoother sanding process. Okay, now I see that we have different size tools here, and can we point out some different areas that we sure. do need to wet sand? Okay, we've got this big flat surface right here on the top cat of the Glastron. How big is that pad? That's a six inch disc, and for the flat surfaces, this I just would knock this out. This is quick as it can be. Okay, now how about how about this flange going down the top cap? Okay, for that, I've got a three inch disc, and this is a three inch Griot's polisher that I've turned into a damp sander, and this will take out this three inch section right here. So the tool company manufacturer is Griot's? Griot's. Okay, do you have anything even smaller? Because I have some very tight radiuses into that, that top cap. This is made by Rupes. This is an Italian company, and this is their TA50. It's a two inch sander, but it is air power, but it has a lot of <coughs> power. And it's gonna enable me to get into the, all those little tight, thin areas. Okay, could you help me, when we're wet sanding this boat, and I know tonight you're, you're bringing in people from all over the world to work on my boat, and you're gonna teach them how to wet sand, and you're gonna teach them how to compound. We have some we have some tight corners, and, and inevitably when you're spraying on gel coat, maybe you're doing a little spot repair or something like that, and you hit a, a tight corner, and you go to sand it, you can sand through the gel coat. How can we protect it? Well, two things. One is for, for the edges down here, we'll use some uh, painter's tape like this, but for these raised body lines like this, we want to take this 3M quarter inch blue vinyl tape and anchor it, and then just pull us out about two or three feet, 
and then you use this to steer it and use your other finger to just take and firmly press that down. And this is going to serve as two functions, John. One is going to actually protect that raised point because, of course, the gel coat is going to be thinner there since gravity tends to make it want to flow over the edge. Right. Two, as you're sanding, you develop what's called a slurry. Okay, in this case, it's going to be this teal green color, and it's going to cover that up. And if I can't see it, I might sand over it. By putting this vivid blue uh, vinyl tape on there, it acts as a visual indicator, which warns me, hey, I'm coming up to it. Don't sand over it. Man, what a great tip. I was always taught that you start at about maybe 600 grit or 800 grit wet dry paper and then you make your sanding progression. You're doing it faster and easier, and where do you begin? Well, we're gonna start with the 3MP1000. And again, this is high t uh, new technology, so a 1000 grit cuts as fast as an 800, plus it leaves a sanding mark pattern that's more uniform, and it's gonna make the progression through the different levels a lot faster. Now we've gotta mask those 1000, you know, that 1000 grit scratches. Where do we go? Do we go to like 1200, 1500, or what? Well, after the P1000, we're going to go to P3000, and this is going to sand very fast because now we're not trying to remove orange peel. We're just trying to refine our sanding marks, and then after that, we're going to, believe it or not, we're going to finish out with 5000. What I have here is very important. This is a flexible sanding backing pad. And when you are folding your wet dry paper, you wanna just take this first half fold, kind of wrap it around tight, and this is how you're gonna to have to hand sand into some real tight radiuses. Welcome back. We have been wet sanding the top cap to our Glastron with Mike Phillips from Marine 31. And so far it's taken the team about five, six hours. Yep to do all the sanding, but we're not done. We've got to remove the scratches now from that gel coat. We want to really have a reflective shine. And what are we going to use and, and what's the next step? This is a brand new product from Marine 31 and in the industry. This is the Captain's One Step Compound and Polish. And it's going to cut aggressively like a true compound, but it's going to finish out like a fine cutting polish. Just like with our sanding progression, guys, traditionally what you have to do with rubbing compounds is you start off with a coarse grit, then you go to medium, then you go to fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a one-step process. And can we get into the difference between organic uh, grit versus engineered types of abrasives? Sure. Most compounds on the market use mined abrasives. So it's something dug out of the earth. They filter it to get different sizes from coarse to medium to fine. But as long as they're on the surface, they're always cutting the gel coat or cutting the paint, leaving a swirl behind. They replace one set of scratches with a finer set of scratches. With this product, the abrasives are engineered. The engineers can control the size of the particle, the sharpness of the particle, the rate it breaks down. And what this does is it gives them the ability to take and make, create a product that'll cut quickly, but it'll finish out like a polish. Okay, so how do we do it? What machine are we using and what pad? This is a Flex PE14 rotary polisher. And I have a seven and a half inch wool cutting pad. And the reason we're gonna start with wool is because the fibers themselves act like an abrasive to work with the compound to cut those scratches out quickly. Okay, and this is just rotary, so it just spins. Spins in a okay. circle, yep. How fast, what, what are we turning the machine on? How many RPM are we looking yeah, for? This is variable speed, so you can range anywhere from 900 RPM to say 1500 for the cutting step. This particular model actually will dial all the way down to 400 RPM for getting to the tight areas where you don't want a high speed. Okay, so about 900 to 1500 yeah, RPM. It's flexible, wherever, it's personal preference. Okay, what is this? foam pad all about, Mike. I've never really quite seen one like this. Okay, this is a very specific foam pad. This is called a blue hybrid cutting pad made by Lake Country. And if you feel it, it's kind of sharp. And the reason for that is because gel coats don't really like soft pads when you're polishing them. They like a firmer, harder pad. This is a different flex machine. What is this called? This is the 3401. So instead of rotating, when that pad is spinning, it makes a circle and then it oscillates inside that circle and that guarantees no swirls in your gel coat bow or painted bow. How long do you think it will take us to get the top cap not only compounded out, but also with a one-step product like this, it's gonna polish it? A couple hours with these products. Okay, well, we got some work ahead of us. Let's get to it. Let's do it.
Don't pull the plug. The boats, the tools, and ShipShape TV will be back in a snap. Welcome back. You're tuned into ShipShape TV, America's favorite boat improvement show. Now that we've compounded and polished the boat, the next thing we need to do is seal the surface, and we're going to do that with a coat of wax. Tell everybody at home what we're going to be using here. This, this is like the best you can get on the planet for waxing a boat. Yeah, this is the Marine 31 Gel Coat Carnauba Wax plus sealant. So it combines carnauba wax for high gloss and shine, which we all love, plus synthetic polymers for long-lasting protection and UV protection. Tell everybody about the consistency of the material and, and why that's so important. It, this is important. It's not a real thin product. It's actually kind of thick, and that's nice because a lot of times the major surface on a boat is the hull, and that's at an angle. When you put the wax on there, it won't just drip off. It gives you time. It's called dwell time, so you can work it over the surface. Okay. Now, you're a big advocate on doing things with machine versus by hand because it makes it so much faster. What machine are we going to be using to wax the glass drawn? I got two machines here. Now this is the Porter Cable 7424 XP and if you remember this is the one we were sanding the boat with and now all I've done is taken the sanding disc off, put on a soft foam waxing pad and now this is ready to start machine waxing. Okay what's the other tool? This is the Flex 3401 dual action polisher. This is the smoothest most powerful dual action polisher on the market and I took the foam cutting pad off and again just put a soft foam waxing pad on there. So you sell all of the detailing products, you sell the pads, you sell the machines and Mike you're really the leading authority in the world on auto detailing. This is your book. It's, it's classified as like the bible of, of car detailing. I know that you are right now writing a detailing book on, on for your boat maintenance. Yep, boat okay, detailing. For boat detailing. And I know tonight you've got a seminar and you're going to be training people. And, and where did people find out about this training session that's taking place tonight on my boat? Mm -hmm. and, and where are they coming from? Well, Marine 31 has our own discussion forum. Any project I have, I put a thread up that you can sign up to be a participant of the class. I got guys coming in from locally, all around the United States. I've even got a couple guys flying in, one guy from Europe. Oh man, this is going to be so fantastic because this Glastron by the end of tonight is going to look mint. But Mike, thank you very much. We have a little bit of time left over. So guys, let's real quick hear from our next guest expert in the marine industry on today's very next tip on how to make our boat ship shape. So guys, if we could, let's get into it. Attention outboard boat owners. It's now time for Endless Propeller Solutions presented by Yamaha. John, one of the biggest attributes about the performance of the boat is the propeller. Now, with propellers, you've got typically a three-blade propeller, which is a good blend of performance and economy and cost. And then, depending on what you want out of your boat, if you want more stern lift or better acceleration, and are willing to give up a little top speed, maybe a four-blade's right for you. There's also different materials, like stainless steel and there aluminum. Is. There is. This is one of the biggest questions that we get on the program, and we have invited a true expert in the field to join us today. This is David Mueller, and David is the Propeller Products Manager for Yamaha Marine. And David, it's my understanding that the engineers at Yamaha, who make the engines, have also engineered the line of propellers, and you make a lot of different propellers. We do. And why might it be a good idea to stay in the same group and maybe not select an aftermarket propeller for a Yamaha outboard? You know, that's one of the reasons why we talk about endless propeller solutions is we want to have the propeller solution for your Yamaha outboard so that you get maximum performance. You have to remember our engineers, the same guys who developed the engine, also are key in developing these propellers and they're designed to work hand in hand. Do the aftermarket companies have the proprietary information? No, they don't. Isn't it true that a propeller has to spin at a certain amount of revolutions uh, when the boat's going as fast as it possibly can? That's the way you determine, uh, to begin to determine the correct propeller for the boat, is you need to be in about the upper 30% of the wide open throttle range. With the Yamaha four-stroke, that's 5,000 to 6,000 is the range, so you want to be about 5,700 to 6,000 RPM. At wide open throttle, maximum trim. What are these data sheets here on the display table? These are our performance bulletins, and this is where our application engineers actually go out and work hand in hand with all of these different manufacturers. There's over 1,300 of these things where they, they determine the correct engine and the correct propeller for each boat style, and then actually publish the data 
about the engine, about the prop, about the fuel consumption, the fuel burn, all of that information is right here for you. So chances are somebody at home will have the exact same hull, the same length, the same dry weight, mm -hmm. the same beam, and you've already done the work for them. You answer some basic questions and a lot of times you'll find your exact boat out there and it'll tell you what propeller to run on it. This is going to be invaluable. How do we get people at home actually to the resource? You go out to YamahaOutboards.com, look under Owner Resources, and you'll see Performance Bulletins. And if you can't find your specific boat, then look for one that's like it. Ship Shape TV will be right back. Welcome back. You're watching Ship Shape TV. Boat improvement made easy. Bob, can you see the reflection, man? Can you see the shine in the top cap of this glass drum? Is that amazing? John, that's absolutely unbelievable. Hey, welcome back. We have a real treat. We have the owner of Marine 31 with us. He's right over here. This is Bob McKee. And Bob, I got to tell you, I had no idea that the top cap and the hull was going to come out as good as it did. If you guys take a look at home, take a look at, at this extreme close-up of the orange peel that we had in this teal colored gel coat, OK? Well, Mike Phillips, your director of training okay. out at Marine 31, he taught us how to wet sand. He then taught us how to compound with one product that you make mm. in-house from Marine 31 to where we did all of our rubbing compounds, all of our polishing in just one step. And then he taught us how to properly seal our gel coat. And guys, this is so applicable if you're doing a minor gel coat repair. You're gonna to need to know all those steps. Bob, we need to thank you. Thank you so much for hosting us. Thank you for coming, Thank you for making these products. We also need to thank Mike Phillips, we need to thank everybody from the seminar that came today. I mean, literally from all over the country and from across the pond. I mean, we had people here yeah. from Europe. My guys, like always, worked real hard, but our time is all used up. So how about this? How about until we see each other again? Can you do yourself a favor? Can you get out there and start making your boat ship shape? Of course you can. See you on the next go around. I'm John Graviscus, again, Bob McKee from Marine 31. See you real soon. Bob, I, I, I just cannot believe this is, this is one day's work. Closed captioning for Ship Shape TV has been made possible by Marine 31 Boat Waxes, Cleaners, and Polishes. At Marine 31, quality and value stand above all else. Professional results are only a few simple steps away. Marine 31, for the captain that demands the best for their boat. <laughs>